Hey everybody, this is Hogan Brown with Loon Outdoors, and today I'm going to show you how to tie a real simple yet effective and versatile cold water bass fly. Um, a lot of times in cold water, especially in our guiding that we do here, we fish a float and fly rig or a um, sinking line, a slower sinking line with a jig style fly that we can crawl across the bottom and present in a much slower manner to our bass. There's a good analogy, kind of one of my mentors in the kind of cold water bass game told me, he said, you know, everything moves slower when the water gets colder. The prey, the fish, everything. So you need presentations and flies that can be fished slow. And one thing that I always think of when I'm thinking slow with especially largemouth, but spotted bass and smallmouth in general is that I need a fly that I can fish slow but that moves with a minimal amount of motion applied to it. Okay, so that means it's a buggy kind of pulsy fly that uh, will just kind of sit in that water on the bottom and just kind of pulse and move. So I came up with this simple cold water bass jig. It can be fished straight down as a jig or uh, under a float and there's a lot of different variations that you can make on this. So the first thing, I use a 1 ounce jig head, basic fly or basic hook. You can buy uh, most manufacturers. Uh, most fly shops are going to have this. And they're manufactured by a bunch of different hook manufacturers. Now I'm going to add some wire just to increase the weight. And I do this because, yes, I could go to a heavier jig but that's going to put me with a larger hook. So this is point two. Wrap this around. Always when I'm wrapping lead, I kind of give myself a little space at the end because I'm going to tie in a, a tail. Just adds a little extra weight, a little extra bulk to the fly. Uh, for this fly, I'm going to use red thread, 6 aught. Uh, size really doesn't matter whatever you're comfortable tying kind of a, a medium size streamer style fly with. Trim that off, work it to the back then I'm going to take some black just standard black marabou okay or used a little bit off this feather and I just pinch it off. And this is not an exact science. Now you can make the tail as long or as short as you want. I tend to make it a little longer longer to get as much pulse and kind of movement out of that fly as I can. Again, an important part of this is that minimal or that maximum movement with minimal motion applied to the fly. I'm going to be just hanging this under a float or slow crawling it along the bottom down a rock wall. Now you can tie this in a variety of colors. Um, I tend to tie most of my winter flies in dark colors and that's really simply because a lot of the water that I'm fishing is going to be stained or colored up and these darker colors are going to create a larger profile, larger image um, underwater. So black, purple, any of that type of stuff is kind of a good, good idea or a good color palette for um, these type of flies. For the back rubber legs, there's a couple different things I use. I'll use these kind of black rainbowy rubber legs. They kind of got like this oil slick sheen to them. Okay. And I'll take a clump. They are a hairline product. It says rainbow shimmer legs. Okay. I'll take anywhere from two to four. I'm going to make this one a little buggier because we've actually <laughs> had some pretty dirty water around here. So, 
And I always take and I trim those rubber legs a little past the marabou tips. That's just going to give it a little bit more motion. Turn it sideways and I'm tying four in to the side. Kind of match those up. Right there. And you can always trim them with your scissors if they're not exact. Get them up. Tack them to the side. And you can see that bare hook shank where I left that um, the wire off of kind of creates that nice little spot and you're going to still keep this nice kind of level even hook shank. Give it some secure wraps. A couple different things people do at this stage to kind of make it their own or give it some trigger type of stuff. You can put a little hot pad here. I call it a hot strip. You could put some like hot pink or hot purple um, marabou kind of underneath so there's that fly flips over and it pulses up. It's got this kind of hot color that shows. Um, you can even put a rabbit strip coming out under there if you want. Um, the idea is that as that fly jigs, that upward motion shows that hot color and that's kind of a trigger um, a lot of times. For this, I'm going to use medium crystal hackle in black by Hairline. You can tie it right in. We use a couple different crystal hackles. And again, you can use, if you want to use a thicker brush or something like that to kind of make it a little fancier, you can do that. And I just palmer it around, stacking the wraps next to each other. And as I make each wrap, I pull those fibers back um, so I get the full display of them. Um, one thing about these jig flies uh, and you know kind of winter flies as you fish these slow tight to structure tight to logs underneath stuff throwing them with a float up onto the rock banks um, you do lose them okay so this is not the type of fishing where you want to fish your you know beautifully crafted perfectly meticulously you know referenced crayfish pattern or something like that um, you want to create flies to do this that you don't mind sticking in the rocks having to go over them you know possibly pull out or break off throwing it right onto some timber and uh, getting it stuck in a tree you know you don't want to you don't want to tie these uh, a beautiful beautifully crafted fly Okay, so I palmer that about halfway up the hook shank, tie it off, pin everything back, and again, just kind of give it a few secure wraps. Next thing, I'm going to take the same thing, black, this time, crystal hackle, but in large. So just little larger fibers, tie it in, okay, and... Palmer it around. And again, pulling those fibers back, giving it that thick, dense look. Okay. And this, these larges tend to be a little sparser on the fibers. So I do double it up a little bit. You could probably see me making a few more wraps than I did on the medium. And when it gets up to the head, just tie it off. And again, keep these flies simple because the chances are you're not bringing them home. You're going to leave them in a rock, a tree, or if you get a big fish, hopefully they don't break you off. Burp. So at that point, I'm going to kind of clean up the head with some thread, pin some of those fibers back, and that. And at this point, I kind of, I've been doing this to add some subtlety to it. Um, I take ripple ice fiber, okay, this is olive, um, also at, on occasion throw in the the UV pearl across black just to give it a completely different look. But these are kind of long and slender fibers. I imagine these cut up are a, a, a really nice dubbing. 
but I take a small clump okay not much and I set it kind of make sure there's and kind of do a loose kind of wrap around okay and then as I come from the opposite angle with my thread it gives me a little bit of a collar okay now I'll cut these take those push those back and pin them back just like I would with like maybe a soft tackle or something like that okay and it is an unexact science if you look at it and you're like oh I need some more then add some more if you look at it and you're like hey that's good enough then leave it the way it is and I do this just to add a little bit of flash and if you notice I keep them thicker on the bottom or denser than I do here as you can see there's kind of that black spot and that's to give it kind of that dark on top light underneath as you pull it or it bobs in the water okay it's just most things naturally occurring are darker, darker on top and lighter underneath so even though you're fishing this big black what amounts to blob jig there is this color differentiation within the fly at that point you got a couple options you can tie it off and call it good I always like to add some rubber legs I mean it's a bass fly right so I take these what are essentially spinnerbait skirts okay that you buy these are round rubber legs okay and the reason I like these and you can buy them too at any fly shop in uh, they're used on a lot of dry flies but they are stiff okay they don't move or wiggle necessarily as much they kind of hold their shape okay and I like that at a on the head okay I take two and I tie them right to the sides you can say they split right out and those are those aren't moving like the rubber legs in the back okay and that's on purpose I like that um, you know some people like that really pulsing rubber leg look but we got that coming out the back of the tail this is the front and you know I want this to look a little different have a little different movement to it and a little simpler I usually do two on each side. Now, if you want, you can do two more there and two more on the bottom and make it a full kind of skirt, so to say. But for me, I, I don't do that very often. I let those come out like legs. I just throw it in right behind there. Tie it off. Then kind of twist it, trim up the extra little fibers. Okay, make sure those rubber legs are right where I want them. Check the links. If you want to trim them, you can trim them. Then with that, one reason I use that red thread is it gives me that nice red collar. Okay, I'm going to put a little UV clear fly finish and thin right on the top. Okay, hit it with the plasma light and again if you've watched me tie before you can definitely put some hot spots in there using some of the uh, colored resins okay or the UV fly finish in hot red would look good or even if you want to do some purple we got some good purples you can put in there um, but basically at this point the red the red kind of collar is going to be my hot spot and just bake it in with the plasma light and there you go. That's just a basic, simple cold water bass jig. Hogan's simple cold water bass jig. Um, and again, in these, vary the colors, change some stuff up, throw some hot spots. You know, a lot of times in cold water, it's about finding that trigger. You know, what's going to get that bass to eat or strike out at that prey. Thanks again, everybody. This is Hogan Brown from Loon Outdoors. Check out our YouTube channel here. Like and subscribe. And, uh, let us know in the comments if there's any flies you'd like to see us tie. All right, take care.